All right, let's have a look at this question then. So we've got a function, right? Um, f of t is 2t squared plus 7. Now, f of t, f of x, same thing. You place t and x, not a problem. Is there anyone that feels they have done this question? It's fine. Or is it one that you've just not actually... You went for the easy stuff yesterday, yeah? You kind of left the rest. Okay, so we've got a, the function is obtained when the graph of f is transformed by a stretch scale factor one third parallel to the y-axis, that means in the y direction. So if we have a look at that, let's just look at function notation. If it was f of x, what do you do to f of x to apply a stretch scale factor third in the y direction. One, one over three. So it's just one over yeah. three times f of x. That's it. Okay? Because in the y direction, so the y coordinates get changed. So remember the y direction stuff's quite easy. You just do it outside the function, whatever you want to happen. But then it says followed by a translation by the vector two minus four. Okay. <coughs> so when we do a translation of two minus four, right? Go on. So we would be thinking about just the translation would be f of x. What would be inside? Minus two, and then. Minus 4. Because okay. the y one is the same, the x one you have to do opposite. All right. Now, the problem with this one is that it definitely says a stretch and then a translation. Okay, a stretch, then a translation. So what we have to do is apply the stretch to the function first. And then that becomes a new function that you then do. Okay. So, for instance, if we were to do a third f of t, this becomes a third times 2t squared plus 7. Right? Make sense? Okay. <coughs> then we have to do the transformation afterwards, right, which would be the minus 2 minus 4 thing. So that would end up being a third times 2 t minus 2 squared plus 7 and then minus 4 right at the end. Because remember, if it's a vector 2 minus 4, the minus 4 just shifts it down. Remember, it's the x direction is when you have to take the opposite, the y direction is when you take the direction it actually goes in. Because it's 2 minus 4. The translation is 2 minus 4. So whatever the x one is, you take the opposite sign. And the y one, you just leave it as it is. Do you remember why? We explained the y coordinates, you just take the four away, but it's not the same with the x. Do you remember with the x shift, it was, uh, if it's, if I want to shift everything in a positive direction too, I have to actually look back the other way and, and bring it up forward, don't I? So it's kind of like doing it the opposite. And then we've just got to give it in something t minus b squared plus c. So we would just multiply it out, yeah? So we'd end up with 2 over 3 t minus 2 squared plus 7 over 3 minus 4 at the end. And then we just have to simplify the 7 over 3 minus 4. Now that's a good 
skill to see whether you've remembered. How would I do 7 over 3 minus 4? Okay, so change 4 to 12 over 3. So that becomes 2 over 3, t minus 2 squared, and then minus 5 over 3. Can I multiply by 3 to get rid of the divide by 3s? No, because... But can I just multiply everything by 3 and make it the same? Why not? Yeah, so there's no equals to anything. Alright. <coughs> Alright, so you can't just multiply the whole thing by 3 and expect to keep the same thing. It doesn't work that way. For an SL. For IB. But I'm just using it to the question. Um, let's have a look. Um, so we've got 3x squared. One unit to the right, two units down. So that would be a vector of what? One minus two. One minus two. One minus two. There's the vector. Um, the graph is the image of the graph F after the show. So you should be able to write that one quite easily now. So you've got 3x squared. So, a different question is f of x equals 3x squared, and we apply a translation of 1 minus 2. Um, you have a go at writing the new function. Would not be minus 1. 1 unit to the right. No, but the translation is not affected, it's the function that you write is the problem, yeah? Anyone? Girls at the back, do you want to? So say that again? Is everything, are all the questions like moved so they're not actually next to the question number? Then I just printed it straight off the thing. Okay, yeah, so this is G, uh, G, this is what G of X becomes, yeah, okay. So, we're actually doing this bit first. That's right. <coughs> so this here is the start of question six, anyway, that's why. So if we were to apply, um, translation one minus two to three X squared, what do you reckon? Spellica, what do you reckon? What do you think? So, three open brackets, x, x, minus one bracket. Yeah, I'd agree with you on that. Everyone else agree? Yeah. yeah. And that is actually in the form 3x, right? Now, what are, now this is the next thing I guess, it's the important bit for you. What are the coordinates of the vertex of graph G? So that is G that we've just written. G of x is that. What are the coordinates now? 1 minus 2. 1 minus 2. So the coordinates of the vertex are 1 minus 2. Now, <coughs> Can you see how to use this form? This is called completed square form. I don't know if you recognise that yet. How do we use this form to figure out the coordinates of the vertex? Same people again. Move to the other side. No, I don't need to move anything. Or you just, oh, just the one that brackets is the yeah, so thing to realise is that in completed square form, that, but the opposite is the x coordinate, and that is the y coordinate. So the same things again. So, do you, 
uh, do you recognize that now as completed square form, yeah? Yeah. So this yeah. is completed square form, right? Now, for us, we've done it in two ways. We've found completed square form, but we've also ended up with completed square form after doing a transformation, which is good. So does the green not affect the vertex? No. no. <coughs> and the other way we can see that, I don't know if you've ever noticed, well, not ever noticed, have you noticed, ladies and gentlemen, that this one that we started with, where is the vertex of 3x squared? Zero, zero. So does the 3 affect it? No. I could have 4x squared, 5x squared, 6x squared, the vertex is always at zero, zero. And therefore, if I translate one that's at zero, zero by one minus two, the coordinates of the vertex are just going to go from zero, zero to one minus two. So we got there anyway, though. So that ended up, so it's a simple way. That's why in the question, actually part A was write down the coordinates of the vertex. Right? Part B was therefore do it one of two ways, use function notation or use the coordinates of the vertex to write it in that sense. I'm aware there's a lot of uh, sort of blankish faces here. It's not your most... Um, What's the word? Interactive of topics. Are you finding it a bit tricky? Yeah. yeah. Does that mean we've already done B? So B, yeah, that's what we've just done. Right there. Um, <coughs> so let's have a go then. So question seven is let f and g be functions that g of x is two times f of x plus one. This is a really good test of your understanding. So there's not even a function. We've got g of x equals 2 f of x plus 1 plus 5. Now if we have a look at that, right, if I say to you, clearly, whatever f of x was, right, whatever f of x was, could be any function we like, Something has happened to it, <coughs> excuse me, in terms of transformation to get it to be g, g of x. And g of x is 2f of x plus 1 plus 5. So, have a think. What is applied? What transformation is applied? Who would like to? Uh, one of them is a translation with vector minus 1 and 5. So, translation minus 1. Fine. Yeah. You think? Because? Because it's x plus 1, so it's the <coughs> x, but you reverse it to minus 1. Yeah. And plus 5 is the y. Okay, Janice? So stretch um, y direction factor 2. That's it's starting to become a bit easier. Do you remember what I said? The way to think about this is, is not what happens to the graphs, think about what happens to each coordinate. So that what's happening? Am I moving the x coordinate, moving the y coordinate? Am I multiplying the x coordinate, the y coordinate? The best way to cope with these, because I do understand for for quite a lot of people, it's difficult to visualise what's going on. But we just need to make think what happens to the coordinates rather than what happens to the graph. Right. Okay. <coughs> um, so the graph of so h of x is minus g times 3 of x, My, so h of x equals minus g of 3x. So, <coughs> tell me what transformations go to get from g of x to h of x. Think of 
them that way. Valentina, would you like to have a go? But I want a, I want an actual transformation. Uh, it's, a stretch. it's a stretch. Pardon? Stretch in which direction? X direction. But that should make you think, what's the scale factor? Not three. One, one, one. one over three. Because when it's with the X, remember it's a bit, it's not so straightforward. <coughs> and then what? Reflection in X axis. Okay. <coughs> so, so we've got here it's a vertical stretch by factor. There's a different question there. So with this point, we've figured out what the translation are, but I want to have a look at this bit. So I know my page is getting really messy. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to, um, can I do I'm going to take this bit away. It says that... Um, it says it's done to a particular point on the graph. Alright? It's done to a particular point on the graph. So... Thinking about what I said about uh, just dealing with x and y coordinates. Um, you are given a coordinate. Technology, love it. <coughs> You're given a coordinate. So we've just looked at that and seen it's a stretch and it's a reflection. But we've got a point which is A, which is 6, 5. And we've got to find out where it goes to under those transformations. Now, we could think of it as a stretch and a reflection. <coughs> but actually, now we just need to think about, well, which coordinate gets affected by which. So, the 3x here, what happens to the x coordinates. It gets stretched by a scale factor of 1 over 2. And what does that mean? Because you can't stretch one coordinate. <coughs> That's the thing. So it ends up being a stretch factor 1 over 3. But what happens to the x coordinate? It times it by 1 over 3. Yeah, so they are all times by 1 over 3. So our x coordinate. So our will be 6 times 1 over 3. <coughs> and what does the negative, what did we say it did? It reflects, but that's the fact that it's a reflection is because all the what coordinates, ha what happens? The y coordinates become negative. The y coordinates all become negative. So this coordinate would end up being? Minus. Minus 5. So the new coordinate would actually be? Two minus five. Okay. <coughs> okay, so let's just uh, make a bit of space. So the so the things that come out of this, yeah. right? Completed square form. Now, <clears throat> just to recap then. You, as you, you know, the level that you're working at, should be able to recognise complete... Well, first of all, you should be able to go from normal quadratic form. So, um, AX squared plus BX plus C. Right? You should be able to go from that form 
two completed square form. So you get a times minus p squared plus q. So in completed square form, you should be able to do that. You should be able to use completed square form from that to solve for equaling zero, but giving it in exact given an exact answer. Okay, you, you guys, you know what I mean by exact answer, don't you? Yeah. My year 12s, half of them did not remember exact answer. What can you not give? What can you not do in an answer if you're asked for exact answer? Round. Rounding in any way. <clears throat> so my tip, uh, my question is, if you're expecting to give an exact answer in terms of pi, in terms of a third, what if you were to get the answer 2.25? You can put 2.25. That's not a problem. Okay, because it's exact. It's like the answer 5 doesn't become wrong because it's not got a pi next to it. It's an exact, unrounded, that's all we mean. So you need to remember how you use completed square form to give exact answers. And now you need to be able to do completed square form for the transformation of x squared. Okay? <coughs> so a stretch uh, and a translation, you need to recognize it. And therefore, the big thing about co completed square form is the coordinates of the vertex. Okay? That's why we can use completed square form to tell us the coordinates of the vertex. If we think of it rather than as a rearrangement of the first one, if we think of it as a, well, this is what happens after a transformation, it makes perfect sense. So if we go from 0, 0, those are the values I end up with after a translation. They are the coordinates. Okay? <clears throat> so for you, that's, that's the main thing. Right? So let's just have a very quick recap. Okay. We start with f of x. How do I apply a stretch in the y direction? Ella. Uh, k times f of x. What would be the scale factor for that? K. Scale factor times k. How would I do, Alexander, stretch in the x direction? Um, f k x. And what would be the scale factor? Uh, 1 over k. Okay, 1 over k. <coughs> How would I do, Aaliyah, a reflection in the y axis? Um, to get a reflection in the x axis, you do like a negative. But to get a reflection in the y. What happens to the coordinates if they get reflected in the y-axis, all the x-coordinates become mm -hmm. negative. Do the y-coordinates change? Mm -hmm. No, so that means that we have to have f of negative, negative x. Valentina, reflection in the x-axis? Um, negative f of x. Okay. <coughs> um, is there anything else you need to cover there? Translation issue of um, if I have f of x and I want to translate by a b of a minus a plus b. Okay. Now put that together with your work on composite functions and things like that. That's, they're the basics, you've just got to uh, apply them, right? <coughs> and remember the completed square form and so on. Right. So, <coughs> can I probably draw a line under, for now, I think you've had enough of it anyway, haven't you? The transformations and functions and things. We can take a break from it. Mm -hmm. Alright. Uh, so, what that means is, that the next thing 
if you're all happy about the straight line stuff, the next thing is actually, if I show you, um, the last thing. Sequences. Uh, number sequence, and we've done quite a bit of that with your paper sixes, haven't we? Yeah. So actually that could be a relatively quick thing as well. So what we're looking for is probably, well, easily now after half term straight into the revision stuff. So we can come back to this transformation function when we need to. Okay. Okay. All right. Off you go. <laughs>